Biggie and Puffy wanted Biggie killed. Bottom line. You don't have to believe me. Believe the facts. Here's a man that wanted to leave bad boy. Dozens of cases have gone unsolved, and one of them is the investigation of Notorious Big's death. But there has been a recent development which may suggest that Jay-Z and Diddy plotted the death of the famous rapper. Keep watching to know more. Recently, Sean Diddy Co. shared his appreciation for Jay-Z and his musical career during an online discussion celebrating the 50th birthday of the Notorious Big. Streaming music service, Tidal, hosted the Twitter Spaces conversation moderated by their chief content officer, Elliot Wilson, while Jay-Z was joined by Diddy, Fat Joe, and more in the virtual conversation. During the talk, the topic shifted to the deaths of both Biggie and Tupac. Jay-Z took all courage to say, as far as Big and Pac and pushing forward, that's just me being a student of the game and loving the game and loving the culture and wanting to push the culture forward. Then the rapper continued, that was the challenge that I was faced with and that's a void. That's a big void. Others stepped in to fill it as well, not just myself. That's a big void. That's the two pillars right there. Imagine that, within a year, the bad boy record founder then added his perspective to the conversation, celebrating Hop for his own career achievements. Bro, you filled them shoes though. You came in and we definitely give thanks. You definitely came, and I just know how much Big really looked up to Jay, did he share? He continued, they looked up to each other. That is crazy you had to step into the shoes of two people. That's all it was, was those two people. They had things unlocked, did he added. Hob was coming, but it was like these two cats was just so big, and so to have all of that come on you and have that responsibility to keep this shit fly and keep the art of it going. I think Hop kept the art of it going and take where they was at and take it even higher. Diddy's statement has made fans wonder if it was Jay-Z's plan to replace Biggie after all. This has also led the fans to speculate that Jay-Z and Diddy may have plotted Biggie's death. Besides, sources have revealed that Jay-Z spoke with the notorious Big an hour before he was gunned down and unalived. The two New York rappers were friends in the early 90 seconds and Jay revealed he talked on the phone with the Mo Money Mo Problems rapper just hours before he was fatally shot in Los Angeles in 1997. Big, real name Christopher Wallace, but also known as Biggie or Biggie Smalls, was embroiled in a bitter war between rappers from the east and west coasts of the U.S. at the time, which had started to spill over into gang-related violence, and he is suspected of being gunned down by a gang member. But rumor has it that someone closer to Biggie plotted the plan that led to his demise. Speaking about Biggie at the launch of his new book, Decoded, at the New York Public Library, Jay said he wasn't a troublemaker at all. He was just a funny, charismatic guy. For him to die so senselessly, I spoke to him that night, and he was so happy to be in Los Angeles, after the whole East Coast-West Coast thing. He felt like he finally was back in Los Angeles and everything was where it was supposed to be. He loved being in Los Angeles, and we see this happen in movies, when everything is just fine and we hung up the phone, and one hour later, he's no longer with us. Additionally, Jay-Z explained how one of the reasons he wrote Decoded, a collection of autobiographical writing, pictures and heavily annotated lyrics is to explain the messages his words convey plainly for people. He told MTV, a lot of people listen to music, but they don't really listen to it. You may know the words and you may bop your head to it, but you don't really understand what you're singing. Well, the fans have derived a meaning to these lyrics and to Jay-Z friendship with Biggie. They believe there is more than meets the eye. Meanwhile, fans aren't the only one pushing the idea that Diddy and Jay-Z are guilty. Biggie's former bodyguard has also come out to say that he was offered $30,000 to unalive Biggie. Well, the drive-by murders of rappers Biggie and Tupac have gone unsolved for over 20 years, but a new documentary uncovers further evidence. Tevin E.G. Perry talks to filmmakers Nick Broomfield and Pam Brooks about their incendiary film, Last Man Standing. In October 2018, former Death Row Records boss Suge Knight was sentenced to 28 years in prison for running over and killing music executive Terry Carter. Documentarian Nick Broomfield's 2002 film Biggie and Tupac alleged that Knight was complicit in the deaths of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Notorious Big Wallace, rival rap icons who were shot in mysterious drive-bys within six months of each other in the mid-90s. But Knight's lengthy incarceration presented an opportunity to uncover new evidence that even decades on could help shed light on the pair of intriguing and high-profile unsolved murders. People are much more prepared to talk now, says Brunfield, speaking over a video call. Now that Such Knight's behind bars, a lot of people are coming forward that were, frankly, frightened of getting killed before. Broomfield says further motivation to make new documentary Last Man Standing, Such Knight and the murders of Biggie and Tupac came from his desire to continue the work of the late LAPD detective Russell Poole, whose investigation into Wallace's murder led him to believe that corrupt LAPD officers had been involved. Poole died of a heart attack in 2015 during a meeting at the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, where he was still arguing his case. That same year, a documentary, Murder Rap, based on a book by another former LAPD officer, Greg Kading, set out an alternative narrative that cleared the police of any involvement. I felt Russell Poole had been really shafted, says Broomfield. 
he had a tragic ending, and then this Bulls program came out. I was horrified when I saw the film. I felt it was belittling the work of Poole, and it made these ridiculous allegations that the LAPD were completely innocent and that this guy called Pucci had done the hit. The hit on Biggie was not a gang hit. Through complete annoyance and out of loyalty to Poole, I decided to do this film. It's fair to say there's no love lost between Broomfield and Kading. When I speak to the retired detective, who was interviewed in Last Man Standing, he says he now regrets his involvement in Broomfield's documentary and accuses the director of being intellectually dishonest. He's not interested in facts and evidence, argues Kading. He's interested in patching together a narrative that is not only reckless and irresponsible, but it falsely accuses innocent people of murder. But, the fact that nobody has ever been charged in relation to the shooting has allowed various contradictory theories to flourish. In Biggie and Tupac, Broomfield presented Poole's hypothesis that Knight may have orchestrated the hit himself because he owed Shakur $10 M in royalties and couldn't pay. Another theory held that Sean Puffy Combs, head of Death Row's East Coast rivals Bad Boy Records, to which Wallace was signed, arranged the shooting and that Knight had also been an intended target. The identity of Christopher Biggie Wallace's murderer is much more contentious. Six months after Shakur's death, in the early hours of the 9th of March 1997, Wallace was leaving a party at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles when he too was shot four times by an unidentified assailant. The killer drove a Chevrolet Impala and used a 9mm pistol, firing precisely in a way that suggested a professional hitman. Wallace was pronounced dead within hours at the Cedars Sinai Medical Center at the age of 24. I don't believe his theory for a second, says Broomfield, who doesn't find Swan's testimony authentic. She has a long history of false names and false testimonies. She's a completely uncredible witness, in Greg Kading's own words, so that's why his theory has never been tested in court. He didn't really have a witness so that's not a sustainable theory, but I think it was enough to put Valletta Wallace off from pursuing her case. His job was to come up with a theory that was going to get the LAPD off the hook for a $500 million lawsuit, which he did rather effectively, claims Broomfield. But just because he came up with a very plausible theory about Tupac doesn't give any credibility to his paper-thin hodgepodge of a theory about Biggie, which is actually the crucial one. Of course, Tupac's murder is a tragedy, but the Biggie killing raises enormous alarm bells about institutional corruption, the malfunctioning of justice and an overt cover-up on the part of the LAPD. Tupac's murder is a tragedy, but the Biggie killing raises alarm bells about institutional corruption. With most of the major players now either dead or serving lengthy prison sentences, it seems unlikely that the true circumstances of Shakur and Wallace's murders will ever be conclusively proved in court. That won't stop people looking for answers. It's about closure, basically, says Brooks. The police is so wicked and that seems like it's not gonna change. It was really crucial how Suge Knight crewed up with the LAPD, and that just shows you how low light they are for a little bit of change. They make good money, but it just shows you how it's about control. It sounds about control. Well, it looks like the control may have been initiated by Diddy and Jay-Z. Let's see if the fans agree. A fan wrote, I believe it. Diddy been eating off of Biggie his whole adult life. I heard it was a setup too. Dot 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 the real Diddy here. Dot 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 dot. They also said Kim Porter had a tell all book. Dot dot. That's why she mysteriously died. Dot dot dot. She walked in on Diddy and a man in the beginning years of their relationship. Another fan wrote, Sue, I don't know if Diddy really did approach him, but two will say this. The reasoning for Diddy wanting Big Gone is something that has been flowed around for a while, I believe, because in one of those Biggie movies, Doc's Diddy slipped up and alludes to it. Just know Big was Puff's sacrifice. There's more where that came from from So Stay Connected for more entertainment.